starring Cloris Leachman, John Shepard, George Chandler, and John Provost as Timmy. And, of course, Lassie. Hi, son. Hi, Lassie. Mom says the Teddy Supper's almost ready. You tell Mom to keep mine hot for me, and you two go ahead, okay? That's what I had to tell her last night. I can't help that, son. There's no timetable on the farm, and if I don't get this fence repaired, Jim Teal's cows will get in the orchard, and we won't have any apples. You tell Mom I won't be long, okay? Okay. Come on, Lassie. What's the matter, Mom? Nothing, dear. I was just thinking. I'm almost finished, and you haven't even started. I'm not very hungry. What's the use? I'm not hungry because I'm worried about your father. It's too much work on this farm for one man. Certainly during harvest season. And you just can't get help. Even the Farm Bureau has no one. Jim Teal had to send for his cousin to help him. Maybe he can help us. If he's helping Jim Teal, he has no time for us. Timmy! Did I say something wrong? No, darling. You just gave me a wonderful idea. Boy, sometimes it's sure hard to understand grown-ups. I don't know why I didn't think of this before. Think of what? Uncle Petrie. Here it is. Who's Uncle Petrie? He's your father's uncle. Uh, hello, Jenny. Ruth Martin. Je oh, fine, dear. Jenny, I want to make a long-distance phone call to Millvale, Pennsylvania. That's right. I want it person to person to Petrie J. Martin. Why are you calling Dad's uncle? You gave me the idea when you mentioned Jim Teal's cousin. The harvest season is over back east, and I thought Uncle Petrie might be able to come out and give Dad a hand. You'll like him. He's full of magic tricks, and he plays the guitar. How old is he? Uncle Petrie? He's sort of ageless. He says he discovered the fountain of youth. Yes, Jenny? Oh, fine. Hello, Uncle Petrie? This is Ruth. Yes. Just wonderful, dear. Oh, everyone's fine. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear it. May I be excused? Oh, no, the weather's been fine out here. I'll tell you why I called, Uncle Petrie. We need your help. Thanks, dear. I knew you would. Well, this place is just too big for Paul to handle alone. He's, he works late, he's up at the crack of dawn. It's just too much for one man. You don't know how much that would mean to me, Uncle Petrie. And there's plenty of room. Timmy's seven, going on eight. You'll like him, he's a fine boy. Oh, that's just wonderful, Uncle Petrie. Good. We'll expect you sometime Thursday, then. It's okay. My dad's going to take us to the carnival the day after tomorrow. Aren't you glad? What's the day after tomorrow? Today's Tuesday, so the day after tomorrow is Thursday. I can't go. Why not? My Uncle Petrie's coming. Who's your Uncle Petrie? Well, he's really not my Uncle Petrie. He's my father's, but I'm going to be here anyway. Why? We've been planning to go for seems of years. I know, but I can go to the carnival any old time. You can see your Uncle Petrie any old time, too. What's so special about him? He's magic, and he discovered the fountain of youth. Ha, ha, ha. Well, he did, and he plays the guitar. Maybe he plays the guitar, maybe, but he didn't discover the fountain of youth. He did, too. He did not. 
When I lived in Florida, my dad took me to see the Fountain of Youth. Well, so what? A man named Pancho Land discovered it. And if you Uncle Petrie said he did, he's the biggest liar in the whole world. You take that back. I will not, because it's true. You do that again. Oh, I know. My supper's spoiling. All right, all right. I'm finished. I heard you. Let me collect these two. Oh, you'd think it was the end of the world. Okay, let's go. Hey, what's going on here? Come on. He called me a liar. I did not. You did too. All right, all right. Now, that's enough. You fellas are supposed to be good friends. Now, good friends don't fight. They talk it over. Who discovered the fountain of youth? The what? The fountain of youth from Florida. Who discovered it? A Spaniard, Ponce de Leon. See, I told you. Is that what you were fighting about? Timmy said Uncle Petrie discovered the fountain of youth. What do you know about Uncle Petrie? He's coming Thursday to help you on the farm. When? The day after tomorrow. Thursday. Mom called him up on the phone. Ah. You better go home now, Scott, and tell your mother I'm sorry about the shirt. I'll get you another one. That's all right, Mr. Mon. I have plenty of shirts. And you better get cleaned up, young man, before your mother sees you. Can I still go to the carnival with you and your father? Sure. Thanks. Come on, Lassie. But, well, honey, why didn't you ask me first before you called him? Because if I had, you would have said you could work the farm alone. How long did you think I was going to stand by and watch you work yourself to the bone? Eat your supper. You're not talking to Timmy, you know. Sometimes it's a lot easier. No, it's not funny. It wasn't supposed to be. I don't think you understand, honey. I like Uncle Peter. He's a nice old coot. Don't talk with your mouth full. But he's a dreamer. He's irresponsible. Well, he managed to earn a living for 40 years, so he can't be that irresponsible. And furthermore, he can certainly milk the cows and water the horse and feed the pigs and weed the truck garden. If he can find time between playing his old guitar and telling fantastic stories to all the kids in the neighborhood. Well, at least one of my men will welcome Uncle Petrie. Timmy! My, don't you look handsome. You and I have to plan a nice welcome for Uncle Petrie, and we haven't much time. Thursday is the day after tomorrow. I won't be here. Where will you be? Scott's father's taking us to the carnival. Remember I asked you? Well, that was a week ago. We had to wait until Scott's father could take us. Does it have to be Thursday? That's the only day Scott's father can take us. Maybe Uncle Petrie could take you Friday or Saturday. I promise, Scott. May I be excused? Yes, you may. I hope you're satisfied. Me? What's it got to do with me? Oh, Paul. He's aping you. He sees you're being difficult about Uncle Petrie coming, so now he doesn't want him either. I haven't said a word to him about Uncle Petrie. You didn't have to say it to him. You said it to me. You know, little pictures have big... All right, I'll straighten him out. How? I'll think of something before Thursday. Better be good. Where's Timmy? He's had his breakfast. 
He's getting ready to go to the carnival. Today's Thursday. You were going to think of something. Uh, I'm thinking. It's a little late, isn't it? Now, who started all this? Who called Uncle Petrie in the first place? Not me. Fine grammar for a college graduate. Not me. Don't change the subject. The subject is about to leave us. Think fast. Whoa, wait up a minute, Skipper. Scott's father's waiting. I think maybe you better take your windbreaker. It's hot out. Well, it might cool off later on. Oh, Lassie. It's too bad you can't talk. Maybe you could tell us what's going on. I've got it. Bye. Bye, girl. Well, Teddy. What? Come here, son. You can't take Lassie to the carnival. Why not? Well, for one thing, son, the carnival people don't like to have dogs around. She might get lost. How can she get lost if I watch her all the time? Well, you can't take her with you on the rides. So who'll watch her? Can't keep them waiting, Paul. Davy! All right, I'll leave her here. Come here, girl. Come here. All right, now stay. Stay. We're all in the same boat, Lassie. The carnival's more important than any of us. with Uncle Petrie. She's been showing him around the farm. Down in oh, they're in the Uncle valley, Petrie's room. The spare room. The valley so low Down in the valley Hear that lonesome wind Is love sunshine, violets love do, angels in heaven know I love you. Down in the valley. Hi there, you must be Timmy. You come out of there. Don't you ever go in that room again. Do you hear? Now, come on. Petrie, you got a mighty tough row to hoe. Then you tuck this hand in here, and this hand in here. You pull this over, like that. Bring this down, and what do you got? Prickiest little rabbit this side of the Mississippi. Oh. <laughs> I can teach you how to do it in two shakes, Timmy. Then you can show all the kids at school. Yeah, I'd be excused. Uncle Petrie was talking to you, Timmy. It, it don't make no never mind. We can get to it some other time, can't we? Yeah, I'd be excused. Yes, dear. Lassie, come on. Paul. That boy was downright insolent. I know. So what are we going to do about it, honey? Just sit here and let him get away with it? If I'd behaved that way when I was his age, my father would have taken a strap to him. Would it make you feel any better to whip him? Now, who said anything about whipping him? Of course not. I just think we deserve an explanation for his behavior, that's all. It's gotten into him, honey. 
He's never acted this way before. Look, I ain't aiming to interfere in none of the boys bringing up, but since I'm the one he don't cotton to, I'd like the chance to sort of straighten things out my own way. I think that's a good idea. Well, maybe, but how long does this have to go on? Oh, I reckon a day or two will do it. I got a few tricks up my sleeve. Oh, I've had it. Let's call it a day. I think that's a good idea. I didn't know you did metal work. Oh, fool around with it sometimes. How about making me a platinum bracelet studded with diamonds? Might at that. Come on, you can dream about it. That's as close as I'll ever get. Good night. Night. Don't forget the light. I won't. Night. Night. Lassie, so you just got to be patient. Turn your head a little more this way. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, just hold it. That's yeah, a good girl. Good morning, Uncle Petrie. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Like a cup of coffee? Thanks. Good. I gotta go into town this afternoon. I was thinking. Timmy, how about you and Lassie coming along? You might talk me into buying you an ice cream soda. May I be excused? Uncle Petrie's talking to you, Timmy. I don't want to go. May I be excused? No, you may not. Sit down. It's only common courtesy, Senator. When someone asks you a question, you give them an answer. I think it's high time that we had an explanation for your behavior, too. This has gone on much too long. What have you got against Uncle Petrie? Timmy, I ask you a question. Do I have to tell? Well, if there is a reason for your behavior, I think we should know it. Mom told me that he said he discovered the fountain of youth. Then I told Scott, and Scott said he was the biggest liar in the whole world. And then we had a fight. And then I asked you who discovered the fountain of youth, and you said Poncho is somebody. Oh, sweetheart. You just didn't understand. Uncle Petrie didn't mean that he discovered the real fountain of youth in Florida. He just meant that he discovered how to stay young. It's just another way of saying you're never going to let yourself grow old. Now, do you understand? Uh-huh. I'm sorry, Uncle Petrie. I guess I was just dumb. Well, now, it ain't a question of being dumb or smart, Timmy. It's like my old grandpappy used to say. Half the people don't mean what they say. The other half don't say what they mean. <laughs> but bygones are bygones. And since you and me are friends now, I got something for you. To cement our friendship. Lassie and me made it last night. Come on over, girl. You gotta be in on the presentation. There, now, give me your right hand. 
This here is a friendship ring. It means that you and me and Lassie are friends from now on. It's got a picture of Lassie on it. Yep. Look, Mom, look at Lassie on my ring. Oh, it's beautiful, dear. Look, Dad. Well, just wait till the kids at school see this. Thanks, Uncle Petrie. Thanks a million. <laughs>